Hello everyone, my name is Lex, and today is Wednesday, it is evening, we have Lancer in a little over an hour uh, with uh, Red Cobalt Gaming, but I wanted to um, do a couple of things uh, before the So we're kind of jumping all over the place in this book, but it's mostly like things that are kind of relevant. So, um, well, actually, you know what? Well, there's two things that I wanted to look at. Um, I guess we can look at, because we were doing mech combat earlier. Um, looking at the rules for that, and then I wanted to look at leveling up because, um, from what I remember, uh, first recent session, Red had said that we would be leveling up in the upcoming one, so I want to take a look at that, uh, real quick. But I think, how far were we? We've gone through that, gone through that, gone through that. Uh, we talked about attacks, looked at that. Uh, actions, I think we looked at this. No, we did not. I think we stopped here. At like, harm. And what that would look like. Uh, so harm, damage, armor resistance, and all that stuff. Damage. Every pilot hopes to avoid as much enemy fire as possible, but they know uh, this truth. Sooner or later, someone's going to get, or someone's going to punch a few holes in your kit. There are four types of damage pilots need to reckon with: explosive, energy, kinetic, and burn each representing a different sort of weapon or projectile. Armor and Resistance Armor reduces all incoming damage from a single source by an amount equal to its rating. Which goes from 1 to 4. However, AP weapons and burn damage ignore armor altogether. AP being armor piercing, if I remember correctly. Characters with resistance to a specific type of damage uh, reduce all incoming damage of that type by half. Characters can only have resistance once per uh, type of damage. It does not stack. Calculating damage. After an attacker has successfully rolled an attack, the total damage is calculated in the following order. The attacker rolls. What the hell? Uh, uh, I hope this does not have a lot of lyrics to it, but okay. Uh, after an attacker has successfully rolled an attack, the total damage is calculated in the following order. The attacker rolls damage and applies any relevant reductions or increases, such as doubling from the exposed status. The target's armor is subtracted from the total. Any other reductions from the defender are subtracted from the remaining damage. Uh, this includes reductions from resistance and any relevant systems, talents, or reactions. Uh, and then finally, uh, remaining damage is subtracted from the target's HP. So let's say your mech has a total HP of 15. The enemy shoots at you and, and scores a successful hit by beating your max evasion on an attack roll. Thanks to another good roll, their cannon is going to deal 12 damage. Lucky for you, you you've installed armor on your back. Your armor subtracts 2 from all incoming damage, reducing the overall damage to 10. You're left with only 5 HP. Take cover. As another example, 
An attacker fires at an exposed target, dealing five uh, energy damage. Uh, the target has resistance to energy and has two armor. Exposed doubles the incoming damage to two. Then minus the two armor means that it takes eight damage, which is half to four energy by the resistance. Okay, so if you look at it again, reductions or increases first, then armor, then uh, resistance, and then and then what that final total is is what you are going to end up taking. Okay, burn. Pilots need to worry about more than just bullet holes in, uh, on the battlefield. Some weapons deal burn damage over time. Burn might represent flame, searing plasma, acid, or something more insidious, like a swarm of grey-washed nanites. When characters take burn, it has two effects. First, they immediately take burn damage, ignoring armor, and then they mark down the burn they just took on their sheet. At the end of their turn, characters with burn uh, marked must roll an engineering check. On their success, they clear all burn currently marked. Otherwise, they take burn damage equal to the amount of burn currently marked. Burn from additional source, uh, sources add to the total marked burn. So a character that is hit by two separate uh, two attack, burn attacks first takes four damage or burn damage, two from each attack, then marks down four burn again, two from each attack. At the end of their turn, the character makes an engineering check. Failing, they take an additional four burn damage. Next turn, the same character gets hit by another two burn attack. Uh, they take two burn damage, then they mark down, uh, mark the extra burn down. It's up to six. At the end of their turn, they must make another engineering check or take six burn damage. Fortunately, they pass, clearing all burn. So burn can stack, and that is actually kind of scary because healthful totals aren't entirely huge. Uh, in this game. So that's rough. Um, all right. Heat. Heat is a special type of harm that doesn't count as damage and ignores armor, although it can be uh, affected by resistance. It represents damage to a mech's internal systems and reactors. It's most often afflicted by electronic warfare, but is often generated by a mech's own systems. A mech that uh, that takes heat marks it on their sheet. When it reaches its heat cap, any additional heat causes it to over overheat. Overheating is discussed in more detail on page 81. If a character without a heat cap, such as a biological character, or such as biological characters in the drones, would take heat, they instead take an equivalent amount of energy damage. Uh, bonus damage. Some talents, systems, and weapons deal bonus damage. Most damage can only apply to melee or range attacks, and is ever is only ever kinetic, explosive, or energy damage, not burn or heat. If no type is specified, bonus damage defaults to kinetic damage, or the attacker can choose a type from one of the same types as the weapon that dealt it. If an attack that targets more than one character deals bonus damage, the bonus damage is half. If the attack targets more than one character, it's most. Huh. Interesting. Uh, immunity. Some characters and objects have immunity and can't be affected by certain damage types, uh, attacks, or effects. Immunity goes beyond simply ignoring damage. Effects or actions that a character has immunity to are completely ignored and may as well have failed or not having taken place at all. For example, a character with immunity to burn doesn't take any burn from attacks and never counts as having taken burn for the purposes of any other effects. Likewise, a character with immunity to damage never takes uh, never takes damage, even zero damage, and a character with immunity to tech attacks can't be affected by tech attacks. Uh, objects and damage, unless otherwise specified otherwise. All objects, including terrain, cover, buildings, and deployable items, have 5 evasion and 10 HP slash size. This means that a size 4 object has... Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. They have 5 evasion and 10 HP per size. 
This means that a size 4 object has 40... Oh wait, no, sorry. I even read that again wrong. So by default, they have 5 of each. And then they have 10 HP per size. So size 4 means that they have 40 HP, but they still have 5 evasion. If an object is more usefully, uh, usually thought of as a group of multiple sections, each one size section is independently uh, destroyable and has 10 HP. If an object is especially hard or hardy, like uh, solid rock, it might have one or two armor. If it's fortified like a bulkhead, bunkers, or starship hull, it might even have three or four armor. The GM may waive this rule outside of mech combat or when it applies to objects not created by characters such as the environment. For instance, if a group of players want to burst through a wall in their mechs to surprise their enemies, the GM might decide that they uh, need to make a hull check. Uh, actions. This section describes the different uh, actions available to characters and how they work. While pilots can take several of these actions, most of them are specifically relevant to mechs and mech combat. Characters can take two quick actions or one full action on their turn. Not much has been kind of ingrained to us uh, so far. Characters cannot perform the same action more than once in a turn except as a free action or reaction. For example, Characters can only boost once per turn by default, but some systems or talents might grant a second boost as a free action. Alternatively, a character could also overcharge to get a second boost. Action Resolution If there's any uncertainty about when certain actions or effects take place or resolve, effects caused by other characters are always, res always resolved first during a character's turn. For example, a character starts uh, their turn in a zone created by another character that causes them to take damage. This resolves before any other effects take place. Otherwise, characters can always choose the uh, resolution order of actions or effects that they take on their turn. For example, if they have two effects that trigger at the start of their turn, they can choose which uh, resolve first. If there's any additional clarity needed, the GM uh, advocates. And then end of turn, effects and activities that take place at the end of a character's turn occur after any standard moves and actions, including free actions and overcharge have resolved, but before the next character starts their turn. If a character is using multiple effects that trigger at the, at the end of their turn, the player chooses the order in which they trigger. And then end of next turn, uh, effects that last until the end of a character's next turn persist until the next turn that they uh, next turn they have in the turn order, not the current turn, even if it is their turn when they receive the effect. Uh, quick actions. So we have boost. When you boost, you move at least one space up to your speed. This allows you to make an extra movement on top of your standard move. Certain talents and systems can only be used when you boost, not when you make a standard move. Grapple. When you grapple, you try to grab hold of a target and overpower them, disarming them, subduing, or damaging them so they can't do the same to you. To grapple, choose an adjacent character and make a melee attack. On a hit, both characters become engaged. Neither character can boost or take reactions for the duration of the grapple. Smaller ca uh, character becomes immobilized but moves when the larger party moves, mirroring their movement. If both parties are the same size, either can make a contested hull check at the start of the turn. The winner counts as a as larger. We sorry. The winner counts as larger than the loser until the contest is repeated. A grapple ends when either character breaks adjacency, such as if they are knocked back by another effect. The attacker chooses to end the grapple as a free action, or the defender breaks free by succeeding on a contested hull check as a quick action. If a grapple involves two, more than two characters, the same rules apply, but when counting size, add together the size of all characters on each side. For example, if a size one allied character, or sorry, if two size one allied characters are grappling a single size two enemy, the allied characters count as a combined size two and can drag their foe around. Oh wow, didn't realize that. Uh, hide. When you hide, you obscure your position of your mech 
in order to reposition, avoid incoming fire, repair, or ambush. Too high, you must not be engaged, and you must either be outside of any enemy's line of sight, obscured by sufficient cover, or invisible. If you hide while meeting one of these criteria, you gain the hidden status. Hard cover is sufficient to hide as long as it is large, large enough to totally conceal you, but soft cover is only sufficient if you are completely inside an area or zone that grants soft cover. Many systems and talents that grant soft cover or plain old obscurement just don't provide enough to hide behind. Uh, if you are invisible, you can always hide regardless of cover unless you're engaged. The exact location of hidden targets cannot be identified and they cannot be targeted directly by attacks or hostile actions, but they can still be hit by attacks that affect an area. Although NPCs cannot perfectly locate a hidden character, they might still know an approximate location. Thus, an NPC could flush an area with a flamethrower even if they don't know exactly where a hidden player is lurking. Additionally, other characters ignore engagement with you while you are hidden and assume you're trying to stay stealthy. You cease to be hidden if you make a attack, which could be melee, range, or tech, or if your mech takes a hostile action, such as forcing a target to make a save. Using boost or taking reactions with your mech also causes you to lose hidden. Other actions can be taken as normal, so it looks like you can move while you're hidden, um, but you cannot boost. You also immediately lose hidden if you cover if your cover disappears or is destroyed, or if you lose cover due to line of sight. For example, a mech jumps over a wall and can now draw unbroken line of sight to you. If you're hiding while invisible, you lose hidden when you cease to be invisible unless you're in cover. Uh, quick tech. When you use quick tech, you engage in electronic warfare, countermeasures, and other technical actions, often aided by a mech's powerful computing and simulation cores. Each time you take this action, you choose an option from the quick tech list. All mechs have access to these options, but some systems enhance them or make new options available. Unlike other quick actions, quick tech can be taken more than once per turn. However, a different option must be chosen every time unless specified otherwise or granted as a free action. To use quick tech, Choose one of the following options. Bolster. When you bolster, you use your mech's formidable processing power to enhance another character's systems. To bolster, choose a character within sensors. Uh, they receive a plus two advantage on the next skill check or save they make between now and the end of their turn. Characters can only benefit from one bolster at a time. Scan. When you scan, you use your mech's powerful sensors to perform a deep scan on an enemy. To scan, choose a character or object within sensors and line of sight. Then ask the GM for one of the following uh, pieces of information which they must answer honestly. Your target's weapons, systems, and full statistics, which can be HP, speed, evasion, mech, uh, armor, mech's skills, and so on. Uh, oh, it's only one of these. Okay. You don't get the whole thing. Uh, another option is one piece of hidden information about the target, such as confidential cargo or data, uh, current mission, the identity of the pilot, and so on. Or the third option, uh, generic or public information about the target that can be pulled from an info bank or record, such as the model number of a mech. Any information uh, gathered is only current at the time of the scan. If the target layer takes damage, for instance, you don't receive an update. Lock on. Uh, when you lock on, you digitally mark a target, lighting them up for your teammates' targeting systems and expose weak points. And exposing weak points, sorry. To lock on, choose a character within sensors and line of sight. They gain the lock on condition. Any character making an attack against a character with a lock on may choose to gain a plus one advantage on that uh, attack and then clear the lock-on condition after that attack resolves. This is called consuming lock-on. Uh, invade. When you invade, you mount a direct electronical attack against the target. 
to invade, make a tech attack, uh, sorry, tech attack against a character with sensors and line of sight. On a success, your target takes two heat and you choose one of the invasion options available to you. Fragment signal is available to all characters and additional options are granted by certain systems and equipment for the invade tag. For, uh, fragment signal, you feed false information of seen messages, <laughs> of seen messages uh, or phantom signals to your target's computing core. They become impaired and slowed until the end of their next turn. You can also invade willing ally characters to create certain effects. If your target is willing and allied, you are automatically success uh, successful. It doesn't count as an attack, and your target doesn't take any. Yeah, didn't realize you could uh, do that on allies. Uh, ram. When you ram, you make a melee attack at with the aim of knocking a target uh, down or back. To ram, make a melee attack against an adjacent character the same size or smaller. On a success, your target is knocked prone and you may also choose to knock them back by one space directly away from you. Search. When you search, you attempt to identify hidden characters. You search in a mech, choose a character within your sensors that you suspect is hidden and make a contested systems check against their agility. Ooh, I didn't realize that was contested. Search as a pilot on foot, make a contested skill check, adding bonuses and triggers as normal. This can be used to reveal characters within range 5. Once a hidden character has been found using search, they immediately lose hidden and can be located again by any character. And then skirmish. When you skirmish, you attack with a single weapon. To skirmish, choose a weapon and a valid target within range or threat, then make an attack. Uh, in addition to your primary attack, you may also attack with a different auxiliary weapon on the same mount. That weapon doesn't deal bonus damage. Uh, super heavy weapons are too cumbersome to use in a skirmish and can only be fired as part of a barrage. Uh, speaking of which, now the, so those are just quick actions. Now we're looking at full on actions. So quick actions, you get two of those per turn or you get one full action per turn. So, first one here is Barrage. When you Barrage, you attack with two weapons or one super heavy weapon. To Barrage, choose your weapons and either one target or different targets within range, then make an attack with each weapon. In addition to your primary attacks, you may also attack with an auxiliary weapon on each mount that was fired, so long as the auxiliary weapon hasn't been fired this action. These auxiliary weapons don't deal bonus damage. Super heavy weapons can only be fired as part of a barrage. Alright. Um, I'm trying to think of, of my mech because one of my mounts is my uh, heavy machine gun. Another one is my two pistols, and then my last one is my mortar. Um, do we attack with two weapons or one super heavy weapon? Let's see. I mean, isn't it? Attack with a single weapon. I'll have to think about that a little bit more. I haven't been doing any barrages. I think I mostly have just been doing skirmishes. So like one burst from my my heavy machine gun and then doing something else like, I don't know. Uh, a mortar for my next quick action. Um... Disengage. When you disengage, you attempt to eradicate yourself safely from a dangerous situation. Uh, make a steady and measured uh, retreat or rely on your mech's agility to slip in and out of threat ranges faster than an enemy can strike. Until the end of your current turn, you ignore engagement and your movement does not provoke reactions. Uh, full tech. 
When you use full tech, you perform multiple tech actions or a single more complex action. To use full tech, choose two quick tech options or a single system uh, or tech option that requires full tech to activate. If you choose two quick tech options, you can choose the same option multiple times. Improvise attack. When you make an improvise attack, you attack with a uh, rifle butt, a fist, or improvised melee weapon. You can use anything from the butt of a weapon to a slab of concrete or a length of hull plating. Uh, the flavor of the attack is up to you. To make an improvised attack, make a melee attack against an adjacent target. On success, they take six kinetic damage. That is kinetic, right? That looks kinetic. Uh, yes, kinetic damage. Stabilize. When you stabilize, you enact emergency protocols to purge your mech systems of excess heat, repair your chassis where you can, or eliminate hostile code. To stabilize, choose one of the following. Cool your mech, clearing all heat and, exp and the exposed status. Uh, or uh, mark one repair to restore all HP. Additionally, choose one of the following. Okay, so it's... So it's one of these two options, and then it's also one of these options. Reloading all, reload all loading weapons. Clear any burn currently affecting your mech. Clear a condition that wasn't caused by one of your own systems, talents, etc. Or clear an adjacent allied's uh, conditions, or sorry, adjacent allied character's condition that wasn't caused by one of their own system talents, or etc. uh let's see other actions activate quick or full when you activate you use a system or a piece of gear that requires either a quick or full action uh these systems have the quick action or full action tags you can activate any number of times a turn but can't activate the same system more than once unless you do so as a free action hey colonia and uh yeah this is lancer rpg um i'm playing in a uh one shot that's being run by uh one of my friends um it's actually gonna be we're actually gonna be streaming it in about 40 minutes now um and we've done two sessions so far this is gonna be session number three it's, it's just a mini campaign of like five sessions and oh yeah and i am new to it i have not played lancer before but it looks cool so and we've been having fun with the past two sessions so um it's uh it's been interesting actually uh yes we are using comp uh, that's how we originally built out our characters. Sorry, I'm going to pop over real quick. Eventually, I'll find the stuff. There's crash. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, oh wait, did we ever make a, did we make a playlist? I don't recall if we made a playlist. Ooh, I may have to go into that. Um, yeah, so we have a couple of previous episodes, so like this one, uh, whoops, did not want to do that. That was session one. And this is currently session two that we had. It's been weekly. Uh, Jesus. Completely 
butchered that. Can I even delete that? I don't think I can. There we go. Um, and yeah, we're also using Foundry as well. Um, the mo the uh, module that he uh, has put together for it, or I guess I guess it's like the on the I'm not sure if it's unofficial or not. I think it may be. It probably is. A lot of I swear a lot of the modules are unofficial on, on Foundry for stuff, but whatever. Um, but yeah, we're we're using Foundry. Um, hey Carsifona. Uh, yeah, Red. He's just doing a mini series, so he had told us that it's gonna be five sessions long and this is session number three so just a couple more and yeah uh it's called solstice rain um oh it's an official newbie adventure yeah that's kind of what i was thinking it was like the star adventure um and yeah he's he's running us through that right now uh, let's see. Where did we leave off? Oh, boot up. Uh, it's a full action. You can boot up a mech that you're piloting as a full action, clearing shutdown and restoring your mech to a powered state. Uh, mount, dismount, and eject, which can be quick or full actions. When you mount or dismount, you climb onto or off of a mech. Mounting or dis and dismounting are the preferred terms among most pilots you don't you don't get in or climb aboard you mount you're the cavalry after all uh you can mount or dismount as a full action you must be adjacent to your mech to mount likewise when you dismount you are placed in an adjacent space if there are no free spaces you cannot dismount uh, additionally you can mount or dismount willing allied mechs or vehicles when you do so, move into the same space and then move with them. You can also eject as a quick action, flying six, <laughs> flying six spaces in the direction of your choice. However, this is a single use system for emergency use only. It leaves your mech impaired. Your mech uh, remains impaired and you cannot eject again until your next full repair. Oh man, so that's literally hitting the red button to GTFO. Um, prepare, it's a quick action. When you prepare, you get ready to take an action at a, spe a specific time or when a specific condition is met. A more advantageous shot, for example. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like, uh, hold on. Let's just continue reading. As a quick action, you can prepare any other quick action and specify a trigger. Until the start of your next turn, when it is triggered, you take this action as a reaction. Okay, so this is pretty similar to uh, uh doing a reaction um like in 5e or, or something like that okay oh so you use a quick action you ready yourself to perform another quick action upon a certain trigger that goes on and then when that trigger happens you use a reaction to do so okay that's pretty cool <laughs> the big we go we button Yep, for other games, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what that's what I kind of figured it was. Uh the trigger for your prepared action must be phrased as when X, then Y, uh, where X is a reaction, action, or move taken by a hostile or allied character, and Y is your action. For example, when an allied character moves adjacent to me, that's the X, I want to uh, throw a smoke grenade, that will be the Y. Or when a hostile character moves adjacent to me, that's the X, I want to ram them, that's the Y. If a frame comes in range, that's the X, I'll skirmish it or prepare. Oh, nice. Uh, your preparation counts as taking the action, so it follows all usual restrictions on that action and on taking multiple actions. For example, uh, or you can't, for example, skirmish, then prepare to skirmish again. Uh, you also can't move and then prepare to skirmish with an ordinance weapon, which normally needs to be fired before moving or doing anything else on your turn. Additionally, after you prepare an action, you can't move or take any other actions or reactions until the start of your next turn 
or until your action has been triggered, whichever comes first. Although you can't take reactions while holding a pre uh, prepared action, you can take them normally after it has been triggered. Uh, you can also drop your prepared action, allowing you to take reactions as usual. If the trigger condition isn't met, you lose your prepared action. Uh, when you prepare, it is visible to casual observers. For example, you clearly take aim or are cycling up systems. Okay. Although you can't take reactions while holding a prepared action, you can take them normally after it's been triggered. Right, and I believe each system as on your mech has a what has one reaction that you can take. So okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um self-destruct is a quick action. When you self-destruct, you overload your mech's reactor in a final catastrophic play if there's no other option for escape or you deem your sacrifice necessary. Uh, you can self-destruct as a quick action, initiating a reactor meltdown. At the end of your next turn, or at the end of one of your turns within the following two rounds, your choice, uh, your mech explodes as though it suffered a reactor meltdown. The explosion annihilates your mech, killing anyone inside and causing a burst 2 explosion that deals 4d6 explosion damage. Uh, characters caught in the explosion that succeed on an agility save can take half this damage. Yeah, that's definitely a big red button. Uh, that prepare paragraph is a little, is a little confusing. Right? Yeah, it is a bit, uh, bit weird for it, but I think I think I kind of got the gist of it. If you if you see X, then you will do Y, um, and then you can't just like any other quick actions. You can't do two two of the same actions within that same term, so you can't like do double skirmish, can't do double boost, and that can't be like how you do the prepares. You can't game it that way. And then if you are preparing something, you can't take any other reactions while you're still holding that prepared action. That has to either trigger or you drop it. Um, or if the trigger isn't met, then you just lose that prepared action until the start of your next turn. So makes sense, but yeah, it is a bit confusingly written. Um, shut down, quick action. When you shut down, your mech powers completely off and enters a rest state. It's always risky to do in the field, but it's sometimes necessary to prevent a catastrophic systems overload or and NHP uh, ca uh, cascading. Um, you can shut down your mech as a quick action. Your mech takes the shutdown status with these effects. All heat is cleared as is exposed. Any cascading NHPs return to a normal state. Any statuses or conditions affecting the mech caused by tech actions such as locked on immediately end. The mech gains immunity to all tech actions and attacks, including any from allied characters. And the mech is stunned indefinitely. Nothing can prevent this condition and it remains until the mech ceases to be shut down. The only way to shut down, or sorry, to remove the shutdown status is to boot up the mech. And then a skill check is a full action we make a full when you make a skill check you undertake a activity that isn't covered by other actions but has a clear goal and is sufficiently complex uh, to require a role the parameters and outcomes of skill checks are up to the gm but they must be involved enough to require a full action if you want to do something that can be done quickly no action is required so examples of skill checks are uh, Abruja on foot wants to open a locked door. The GM asks her, asks her to make a skill check and decides that Abruja can get a bonus from her hack or fix trigger. Uh, Pan wants to jump a crevasse in his mech that's wider than he can normally manage. The GM decides to allow him to try it with an agility check. Uh, Zade wants to lift a heavy boulder with his mech to clear a passage. GM decides this is probably a full action and requires a skill check with hull. Uh, 
Then there's overcharging. When you overcharge, you briefly push your mech beyond fact <laughs> factory specifications for a tactical advantage. Moments of intense action won't tax your mech systems too much, but sustained action beyond prescribed limits takes its toll. Once per turn, you can overcharge your mech, allowing you to make any quick action as a free action, even actions you have already taken this turn. The first time you overcharge, you take one heat. The second time you overcharge, you take one D3 heat. The third time you uh, overcharge, you take one D6 heat. And then each time after that, so fourth, fifth, sixth, etc., you take one D6 plus four heat and you have to do a full repair to reset this counter uh reactions reactions are special actions that can be taken out of uh turn order in response to certain triggers such as enemy attacks or movement unless specified otherwise once you take a reaction you cannot take it again until the beginning of your next turn even if a reaction is usable twice per round or more, your uses of it only refresh when your next turn begins. You can only take one reaction per turn. Or maybe I was wrong when I was saying this earlier. But you can only take one reaction per turn, your turn or other characters' turns. But you can take any number of reactions per round as long as you have uh, reactions still available. Yeah, that's confusingly written. You can only take one reaction per turn. Oh! You can take any number of reactions per round as long as you have reactions still available. Interesting. Okay, so if I'm reading that correctly, that means my mech... Uh... So the mech that I'm using is an Everest, and I have drones as well as one of my systems. So I can place drones around and whatnot. As a reaction, I can use I can have one of my drones when an ally character makes a successful attack. I can have that drone shoot at that same target and deal three connect damage. Um, I could do that on say Remy's turn, but from here if i'm reading this correctly it also seems like if dom was to also attack that same target i could use my reaction to also have it fire on that target with that drone because it's now dom's turn you can only take one reaction per turn your turn or other characters turns but you can take any number of reactions per round and see so yeah and saying that's within the same round as long as you have reactions still available. That's how I'm interpreting this. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. May have to get some clarification on that. Uh, by default, all mechs can take the brace and overwatch reactions. Certain systems and talents can grant other reactions. When you brace, you ready your mech against incoming fire. So reaction once per round. Trigger, you're hit by an attack and damage has been rolled. You count as having resistance to all damage, burn, and heat from the triggering attack until the end of your next turn. All other attacks against you are made with a uh, minus one that's not disadvantage felony. I'm forgetting what the actual term for that is. Um, due to the stress of bracing, you cannot take reactions until the end of your next turn and on that turn, you can only take one quick action. You cannot overcharge, move normally, uh, take full actions, or take free actions. Oh, damn. That really kind of puts you in a bit of a... It limits what you can do in your next turn. But I guess if you know that you're about to take a crap ton of damage. Oh... Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Turret attack is once per round. Okay. Okay, so that's that's good to know. Um, and then Overwatch. When you Overwatch, your uh, you control and defend the space around your mech 
from enemy incursions through pilot skill and reflexes and finely tuned subsystems. Unless specified otherwise, all weapons default to one threat. So Overwatch gets once per round. Embrace is also once per round. Um, trigger a hostile character starts any movement, including boosts or other actions inside one of your weapon's threat range, essentially. Uh, the effect trigger Overwatch immediately using that weapon to skirmish against that character as a reaction before they move. And then free actions. Free actions are often granted by systems, talents, gear, or overcharge. Characters may perform any number of free actions on their turn, but only on their turn and only those granted to them. Free actions can always be used to make, mul uh, to make duplicate actions. The most common type of free action is a protocol, which is granted by gear or systems and can be activated or deactivated only at the start of a turn. Each protocol can only be taken once per turn. From what I also saw, I think protocols only are like once per... I guess it may actually will probably depend because I know that my Ebrist, uh, I can't remember the actual name of the protocol but essentially it's like once per oh god i'm gonna have to look again i can't remember if it's once per rest i'll have to look because we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to look at uh leveling stuff real quick soon um during mech combat oh wait this is pilots in mech uh we're not gonna look at this for right now because there's there's some other stuff that we'll, we'll look at. Oh, quick combat reference. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, this is pretty much a... Okay, yeah, this is a summary of pretty much all the stuff that we looked at. And then there's also the pilot actions, but I don't think that's really going to be coming into factor for us at any point. Um, maybe, not sure. But I'm going to jet back up. Uh, license levels because this is going to be pretty uh, applicable uh, today the protocols are beginning of turn and once per full repair so yeah the one that I believe I have is once per full repair um, and unfortunately I did not get to use it in the combat situation. I had to use it as a, I had to leave situation. Great action economy pays as just cancel. Uh, I believe I have links allowed. You can try and I'll see if I can let it go if it, if it uh, if it doesn't go. Aha, there we go. Ooh. Very nice. Okay, action economy. So per turn, again, full you can do one full action or two quick actions. You get a move, you get an overcharge if you want to use it. If you overcharge, you get heat, and that gets but that gets you a free action. Uh, you have a reaction and then you have one free action that you can use. Um, and then, yeah, these are all the different things that you can do. That's actually pretty cool. Thank you for sending this. I haven't fully explored, uh, CompCon because I have... This is my, uh, my Lancer. Uh... Which I'm using an Everest. Uh, right, so my protocol, which is for once for the scene, I can do or for that scene. Once I use it, beginning of turn, it starts up. Plus one accuracy. That's what I've been meaning to say. Accuracy. Um, on all attacks, checks, and saves, and then additionally, I can once per turn use a boost as a free action. But yeah, this is uh, my mech that I've been using for the 
past couple of sessions. Uh, but this this is actually good. I'm gonna need to keep a reference for or keep referring back to this when uh when it comes up. Um, but yeah, so Red said that at the end of last session we would be leveling up. So I mean may as well kind of read this. License levels. Unlike other role-playing games in Lancer, you don't need to track uh Currency. Your access to mech gear, upgrades, talents, and other character options is instead restricted by licenses. Licenses represent access to the valuable information, resources, and authority required uh, to acquire mech gear and parts. They are tightly controlled by the major powers in Lancer and allow their holders unlimited access to the, uh, their included gear. In Lancer, your pilot progresses by completing missions and gaining license levels, or LL. Your LL applies to both your pilot and your mech as you level up. Both parts of your character become stronger and gain access to more advanced gear and combat techniques. Increasing it allows you to unlock new manufacturer licenses, opening the door to exclusive gear and mechs. Leveling up also allows your pilot to improve their triggers, mech skills, and grit, and lets you choose talents to further customize your playstyle. A new pilot typically starts at LL0, an inexperienced rookie, and levels up to LL1 after their first mission, and then again after each subsequent mission to a maximum of LL12. This section includes a lot of information that is expounded upon later in the book. Feel free to skip it for now and reference the back when you need to. This is your first time reading the book. So, new players, um, LL0. Uh, even at this, you have ex you have access to a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, you have a background. You have four plus two pilot triggers. You have one mech uh, plus two. Sorry, you have one plus two mech skill or two plus one mech skills. You have three rank one talents. You have a license for all G uh, general massive systems or GMS gear and weapons, and one mech frame, the GMS SP-1 Everest. Um, we, because of our, I guess, we had some other supplements that Red had us install at the beginning, so we also had access to two other mech frames. Um, but I still chose the, the Everest anyway, because um, I just wanted to be a basic bitch. Um, so leveling up when characters complete a mission, whether they succeed or fail, uh, their LL increases by one and they add plus two to an existing trigger or a new trigger at plus two, uh, plus one to a mech skill, plus one, uh, talent rank to choose a new talent or improve an existing one and plus one link sorry plus one license rank to spend on mech talents and licenses leveling up naturally increases a pilot's grit which is equal to one half a pilot's total ll rounded up pilots gain their first point of grit at ll1 at every third ll at three six nine twelve pilots also get to choose a new core bonus a powerful improvement to all mechs they build. And then reallocating points. Every time your pilot's LL increases, you also have the option to choose one. Uh, reallocate all ranks from one of your talents to any other talent. Reallocate all ranks from one of your licenses to any other license. Replace one core bonus with another core bonus for which uh, your pilot qualifies. If reallocating ranks from one license to another means your pilot no longer qualifies for a core bonus, you must replace that core bonus with one you now qualify for. And this is the leveling chart as you go from 0 to 12. But I don't think we ha we're we not going to be looking at this, <laughs> this bottom half at any time soon. Um, I don't even know if we're going to be getting to this I think we may be stopping pretty pretty earlier on. Uh, okay. This is building out a character, so we don't need to look at 
from that too much. So the leveling part, I don't wanna keep that in, in check. So we get plus two to an existing trigger or a new trigger that has a plus two. Um, so if I go to my person, So we are leveling up. LL1 lets you use gear equipment from an LL2 frame, but not the frame itself. So if you're aiming for the Dustwing, for example, you could use, or you can get and use the Veil Rifle at LL1 and the actual frame at LL2. Ah, okay. So you kind of get some of the some of the perks from it, but not the full frame itself, it sounds like. Okay. Um, ooh, the other thing was that Red did send us. Actually, hold on a second. A couple of things I really remember to do. Uh, do, 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 do. did say that we would be leveling up in game, but I want to take a peek at this beforehand. Um, okay, so my current pilot skill triggers get somewhere quickly lead or inspire patch and then survive i can boost one of these if i'm looking at this correctly when you level uh one level on next license of choice one hase point one talent rank plus two the one pilot trigger and then also grit which is kind of similar to what's, what was listed here. Uh, let's just say Oh, wait. Ah, okay. I see now. So I could, if I wanted to, add a completely new skill. Um, Matthias, he was a medic. So I think I kind of want to boost his patch by one more. Um, Yeah, I think I'm just going to boost his patch by one. So now he has a plus four to that. So that's fine. All right, his talent. I can add or upgrade a talent. So right now he has leader. Ah, I see now. Okay, so there's also there was also upgrades in each of these talents. Um, So he had field commander. So we can give a leadership die uh, to someone. 
Let's see, open channels, gain five leadership dice in step three. Additionally, you can now issue a command as a reaction at the start of any player's turn. Any number of any number of times per round. Oh shit. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then if we were to upgrade this again, we have an inspiring presence. Gain six leadership dice instead of five. Allies that have your leadership dice can expend them to reduce damage by 1d6 when taking damage or to deal 1d6 bonus damage when they hit with an attack. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Oh, HAS. Okay, that was an acronym for Hall Agility. Um, sleepy, whatever. Engineering. Uh, it, what is S? Now that I'm trying to remember. It's going to bother me if I don't look at it. find it uh, do I really need to I only have a couple of minutes before we get to our next session uh, it's not that important get back on track get back on track um systems Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's see. Heavy Gunner is the other one I had, which I could do covering fire. Hammer beat, if I upgrade this. If you successfully hit your covering fire target with an attack reaction, granted by the talent, your target is immobilized until the end of their next turn. Oh shit. That's kind of cool. Uh, bracketing fire. When using covering fire, you may choose two targets instead of one. Each target triggers uh, and resolves your attack separately, and damage from one target only ends the effect on that target. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then I had spotter, but I don't really know if I've been wanting to use it. Uh, when an ally character adjacent to you attacks a target and consumes a lock on, they can roll twice and use either result. We've been kind of spread out through most of our fights, so it hasn't been useful. I guess if I was to like stick by Remy's mech, because he's a, uh, a size 2 and acts as cover, that could work, but... Uh, um... Head Opticon, at the end of your turn, if you did not move and took the lock on tech quick action, you may lock on as a free action. Additionally, when you lock on, you learn your target's armor, speed, evasion, E defense, mech skills, and current HP and can share this with allies. Uh, Bentham. What the fuck? Bentham Falkalt Elimination. As a quick action, when you lock on, you may nominate an ally character adjacent to you. They may immediately make a quick action as a reaction, consuming your lock on condition. Their action does not need to be an attack, but they benefit from consuming the lock on condition if they do choose to attack. Oh. Interesting. Um. That's only for ally or for for melee attacks. CQ CQB weapons. Walking armory. Can you use a grenade? Yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to the kind of be the support uh mech in this group. I think. No. When resting, spend two repairs to replenish one use of all limited weapons and systems. When you stabilize, you clear all impaired, jammed, immobilized, slowed, and locked on conditions that weren't caused by your own. Spread the high places once permission while resting, you can call in a supply drop. You and your allies may replenish one use of all limited systems 
There are limited weapons and systems and restore one structure. This doesn't require any repairs and can be used even if you have reached your repair cap. Oh. Hmm. Honestly, that I kind of feel like while resting, it's been two player to replenish one, so on the limited weapon systems. Having, I mean, ultimately, having that supply drop is actually kind of cool, and it really is kind of reminding me of. Um, uh, Apex. Um, ah, shit, what's her name? Uh, I can picture her in my head. She's the uh, medic with the, with the drone special, but for her ultimate ability, she's able to call down a supply. Um, uh, god, it's bothering me. I can't remember her name right now, but. Okay. Honestly, I feel like that may be more of what he will do. We also don't have a ton of time, so let's do this. Mech skills. Uh, improve a mech skill. So right now I have engineering. How many of these can I boost? Oh, I can only boost one. Um... Fast, evasive. I, I'm actually gonna take it as agility and boost my evasion, which is kind of my defense, essentially. I'll boost that by one. My heat capacity is still pretty good. Licenses. Oh yeah, this was this was the thing because there's a whole lot of them. Um. I may have to look into this, but we're also kind of kind of cut on time. Uh, let's see, four bonuses. I'm gonna skip that step for right now. Uh, ineligible for core bonuses. Next core bonuses is in place step two. Oh, they could suggest core bonuses, but that's that's for later. Um, okay. I'll update with that. So, interesting. All right, for right now, this is just gonna have to do. I'll have to keep that in mind when we actually get into uh, the session in and of itself. I need to switch over um, and hop into the other Discord. So uh, probably check in a couple of minutes and we'll sh we should be up and running. All right, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Otherwise, if you're not watching, <laughs> but we'll be uh, having it on this channel. So catch in a few minutes. All right.